Okay, welcome back. We're on page 430 talking about uh, making user-friendly applications. And there's a list of rules there, which are pretty decent. And they talk about some of the things you ought to be able to do, like create a good user interface. You know, an interface that actually is consistent and makes sense. Uh, that would be kind of cool. Use input validation to, to keep your, your spreadsheet from crashing. That'd be great. Use what's called guided navigation. We're going to do some of that. Instead of, instead of just having uh, tabs, you know, because there could, there could be, you know, hundreds of tabs down here. Um, and so, you know, have it, be able to go to tab number 47. That'd be a good tool. Hide things that are not needed or distraction. Um, protecting cells. We're going to do an awful lot of that. We're going to protect the workbooks, work cells. Focus on the current content and make kind of some of the background stuff kind of go away. And then on how to make good documentation. Okay. So one of the things that does do this, in order to make all this work, we're going to be using, uh, behind the scenes, we're going to be using something called VBA, Visual Basic for Applications. And this is a built-in feature of Excel. And uh, we're, uh, trust me, we are not really going to be doing any programming in this class. So I'm telling you about it because it happens behind the scenes. What we are going to be doing is recording a macro. Now you might think, what the heck is a macro? Well, macro is basically like, you know, re recording things that you do on your spreadsheet and then playing it back. Okay, so the example they have in the book is pretty cool. For example, um, they want to fix it so that the invoice date, the time, and the therapist and the room number, these little cells right here, automatically get cleared all at once. You know, so because that's something apparently they do an awful lot of. So they want to automate that rather than having to click these guys, you know, one at a time or maybe hold the control key down and, you know, do this and then go here and say, you know, clear contents. I mean, that's not tough, but again, wouldn't it be kind of cool if you could make that go a little faster? So to make that work, um, I have to uh, record the steps. Basically that, I'm going to record the fact that I clicked on that, and 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 clicked on that, then I did a right click, and then I said clear content. I want to record those actions, you know, the mouse clicks, the selections, and all that. That's what I want to be able to do. Now, there are some steps that has to happen first before you can start. It all has to do with security. You can imagine if I accidentally went here and clicked so my macro could actually do some damage, couldn't it? You know, if I clicked over here and said delete, you know, clear contents on my amount. So there's a level of protection that Microsoft built into Microsoft Excel. So there's several things you have to do to get this to work. The first thing you have to do is you have to tell the machine that the location of this spreadsheet, where the spreadsheet is stored on your computer, is or is not a trusted location. I know, it's a little weird. So we're going to have to go in and tweak Microsoft Excel to say, oh, by the way, it is perfectly okay to have macros in this directory. Okay, here's how we're going to do it. So I'm going to go to File, and then if I go to Options, now this is, this is I'll admit, this is a little convoluted, okay? Go to Options. There's a thing called Trust Center. So I click on Trust Center, and then it says, oh, would you like to see the Trust Center settings? Why, yes, I would. And then one of the ones is the Trusted Locations. You could either trust individual documents, which in this case is kind of overkill, but Trusted Location. So right now, here are all the locations that it thinks are trusted, okay? And I'm going to add one on the list. I'm going to add the current directory where this thing is being stored. So I'm, I'm going to hit this little button that says uh, add new location, go browse for it. And so I'm just going to go up to you know my documents directory where my chapter 8 is. Click the button. So I want to tell it that everything that's in this is considered trusted. Now you would probably not do that like on a thumb drive or something because, you know, somebody else could pop a thumb drive in there. It'd be things where you have control and you would probably never allow trusted locations on the network, okay? So this is 
specifically for you know setting things up and, and typically you do this like once right you 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 know if you have if you're going to use the macros a lot you're probably going to just set this up once in the lifetime of excel and it'll stay that way forever but you know hey this is a brand new scenario for us so i'm going to hit the button and so i have a new trusted location okay i know that sounds a little weird okay so now I have a trusted location. So what I need to do is to be able to start doing some real cool developer stuff by recording macros. So what tab is it up here where I can find macros? Let's see. Uh, it ain't home. No. Insert. No. Page. Formulas. Data. Review. Hmm. I don't see it up there. Well, the answer is it ain't there. So one of the things you have to do is turn on this developers tab across the top. Now it's already installed in Microsoft Excel it's just been temporarily hidden from you okay so one more time file options this time I just want to go uh, to customize the ribbon okay so I customize the ribbon over here I can see that these are the main tabs and developer is on the list it's actually there but it's not checked so I click this little button and hit the and whammo, now I've got the developer tab. And once again, if you're doing this for a living, so to speak, you're probably going to set it up so the developer tab is always there. And you're going to set up a trusted location so that your documents will always be there. And, you know, you don't have to go do this a bunch of times. Okay. So once is generally enough. All right. <clears throat> so let's do exactly that. So I I'll click on the developer tab. And here's my record macro and this is exactly like recording on a you know a VCR kind of a scenario or, or doing TiVo kind of thing you know you turn on the recorder you do your thing and then you turn off the recorder and it's gonna remember what you did okay so here's what I'm gonna do um, I, I'm gonna turn on the recorder well turning on the recorder it's gonna ask you some questions like what is the name of this macro and uh, well, okay, let's just do it. So what is the name of the macro? So I'm going to call this one clear invoice. And do I want a shortcut key? And I'm going to use the, the letter C. So that way I can just do control C and it'll clear all those fields for me. Pretty cool, huh? Now I will tell you, use a lowercase C here because if I had used an uppercase C, I would have had to done control shift C. And that's too many fingers, right? So typically most people try to get away with just lowercase letters if they can and where is the the, the macro going to be stored well obviously you know you could have an entire workbook where macros are stored because maybe you've got this macro that does super duper stuff and you want to use it over and over and over and you don't want to have to you know remember what how you did it that's not how, not what we're doing here okay so um Dang, did I? I can't tell if I turned that on. That is apparently not. Okay, I screwed up. Well, it's okay. Let's just do it again. Okay, here we go. So I call this thing um, uh, Clear Invoice. Uh, give it a C. Hit the button. And now I am recording because it says so right there. So I. How would I do? Well, now I, it's just going to remember what I did. And it's not time sensitive. It's not like, you know, it's doing time sequences. So you could take your time doing this. You don't have to. So I'm going to grab this one, this one, this one, and this one. And type and do clear contents. Okay, I'm done with recording my macro now. So I want to go up here and say stop recording. Okay, I now have a macro. Okay, let's try it. All right, because remember I did the control C. So let's put some stuff in here. This is invoice whatever. And here's some, okay, so now I've got some stuff. And I'm, on my keyboard, I'm going to do Control C. Doink! And it did. It worked. So I've recorded a macro and I've used it. Kind of cool, huh? Okay, let me show you one more security thing. You know, they're, Microsoft is really paranoid about this stuff, which is in your favor. So, you know, don't fuss at them and say, you know, why are you guys so paranoid? Trust me. You're going to appreciate it. Okay. Now that I got this, let's say I want to save this workbook. So I'm just going to hit the save button here. And I get this little message that says, dude, the following features cannot be saved in a macro feed. 
Save to save the file with its features, click no, and then choose blah 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 blah. Now I will tell you this is a bad thing to see because the default is yes. If you hit yes, it will have saved the file and removed your macro, the very the very macro that you just created. So be very very careful when this thing pops up and say no, okay, and then it's going to tell you, well, how do you if you you know, how do you save this thing? So I can't sell, save this as an XLSX file anymore. I have to save it as a macro enabled workbook, a different file extension. So I'm going to hit the button. Okay, let's review. In order to get macros to work, I do have to do several things. Number one, I have to create a location, okay, a secure location. Number two, I've got to turn on the developer toolbar because it ain't there. Number three, I've got to build a macro. But when I hit save, I have to turn right around and say, I don't want to save this as a normal XLSX file. I need to save it as something different. And that little prompt that comes up, I have, on more than one occasion, built me a super duper macro, hit save, and that button came up, and I just hit the return key and went, damn. Oh, well. Time to open the document up and do it all over again. Okay, so it's a kind of a pain in the butt, but on the other hand, they are desperately trying to keep you safe, so that's a good thing. All right, let's continue. Okay, there are some gotchas. For example, let's say I want to do the, the undo button here so I can undo, you know, the clearing of that. No. Not only does the undo not work when you use a macro, when you use a macro, all of the undo data goes away, right? If I go here and say, I want to do two and two, right? I could go here, right? And now I'll just say back up, you know, do that, right? Because it remembered two things correctly, right? Cool. But if I do a macro, see how I have a little blue arrow, meaning I have, some, I have something in my history? So I do control C, doink, it's history. My history is history. So not only does it not honor of the undo, it actually erases the undo history. Okay, so if you were kind of counting on that, yeah, that's a little weird. Okay, um, editing a macro. There is a way you can actually go here and click on macros, and it's gonna give you a list of them, and I only have one. And I could go in here and say edit, I, uh, but now we have switched over into the magical world of Visual Basic for applications and we're just not going there, okay? So I'm not gonna ask you to edit a macro. Typically what happens if their macro is wrong, uh, typically the way you do it is you go here and you just delete the, the silly thing and just do it over again, okay? That, you know, if you're not a programmer, that's a very reasonable thing to do is just hit the little delete button and then go through and just do it over. Not a big deal. Okay. Um, some macros are designed like this one. This was, it this didn't matter what cell I was in when I did control C, right? I, I could be in this cell and hit control C. I could be in this hell cell and hit control C. I can be anywhere in the world and hit control C and it all works. Cool? So that's, remember how we talked about relative and absolute addressing? This would be what would be considered an absolute macro. So in other words, it doesn't matter what cell I'm starting at. There is a different one. It says here, use relative addressing. And you have to turn that on before you hit record to make that work. And um, this is probably a good place to stop for the 15 minute mark and we'll demo that in just a few.